back at Big Boom HQ. Look out, people. We have an ice can. An ice can. An ice can. An ice can. It's time to get down to business. Cannon goes here. We've come back to Angel's Camp to do the final experiment in our ice cannon myth. 100 feet. Now, so far, it's been very surprising. We learned that ice cannonballs actually stay intact and can go the distance. Right here, 150 yards. Let's set up our target. Now, we're going to find out if an ice cannon it's time to deploy the army can shoot an ice cannonball. It's time to go to war. Well, I hope you guys packed your thermals because this myth comes from the depths of winter in medieval Russia. Now, there was a town, it was under siege, and they didn't have anything to defend themselves with. So they improvised a cannon and cannonballs out of the one thing they had plenty of, ice. Really, just ice? Yes, ice, possibly some materials to strengthen it, but the history books say it was a viable defensive weapon. Well, the good news is if there's another ice age and the zombie apocalypse happens, we'll have something to fight them off with. Oh, it's really good to be prepared for everything. I'm always prepared. The Mythbusters and cunningly improvised cannons <laughs> go way back. <laughs> so, who better to light the fuse on this mythical marvel of mechanical engineering? Oh. Say hello to our little friend! <laughs> Supposedly, in the ultimate test of backs to the wall improvised ingenuity, the Cossacks crafted a cannon out of the most unlikely material imaginable frozen water. All right, now you remember a million years ago when we first started on the show, we tested ice bullets. And as soon as we shot the rifle, the bullet turned to gases. Which is exactly why I think that before we go and build a full size ice cannon, we should start by testing the cannonballs. Right, because if the cannonballs can't hold together, then the myth is already busted. Exactly. So why don't we do this? Let's make some ice cannonballs. We'll fire them out of a real cannon and take it from there. Good. I like it. The team's previous failure firing frozen H2O ammo... It just can't be done. You're going to end up with vaporized water. ...means the opening salvo in this Siberian siege story will be the weakest link, the projectiles themselves. We've done a lot of research to see if we could find any sort of historical information on the specs of the ice cannonballs. Now, we've found that they may have been reinforced with fibers such as hemp, wood, and paper pulp. So while Tori and I work on these supplemented cannonballs, Grant's gonna work on the clear ice ones. What is going on back there? Hey. So, using natural materials for structurally stronger alternatives... Got us. ...the team makes four types of frozen cannonballs. Yeah, this is gonna be one strong cannonball. Pure ice. Perfect. And ice plus hemp. Ice ball with hip in it. Sawdust and paper. Ooh. Whoa, that is awesome. That's Look at cool. how perfect that is. With their projectiles prepped, it's off to a suitably explosive location. All right, let's bring out the cannon. All right. We've come out to Angel's Camp, where we have a long history of blowing up cement trucks, unleashing fireworks men into the world, and firing off a cannon. Whoa. That's what we're going to do again. There she is. Harry Webb has brought out Old Moses so that we can test each recipe for our ice cannonballs and see which one can withstand the blast of a real cannon. We're going to be firing our cannonballs with increasingly larger amounts of black powder to see if they can withstand the pressure. We're starting with pure ice cannonballs and eight ounces of black powder, the minimum amount we can use in the cannon. Don't worry, comrade. They're only shooting ice. How bad could that hurt? We'll use it to chill our vodka. We've set up our grid to collect some data on speed and also added a target. Hey, come on, let's go dance into battle. So it's all go for test one. We are loaded. Loaded, yay! A pure ice cannonball and half a pound of black powder with a potential muzzle energy of 20,000 joules. Eyes and ears? Surely it doesn't stand a snowball's chance in hell of surviving. Three. Three. Let alone doing any damage to our dancing dummy. One. <laughs> that was awesome. That looked like a very successful hit. I'm gonna hit the bad guy. <laughs> Knocked him down. I am 
totally shocked. Not only did the pure ice cannonball come out completely intact, but it was traveling a thousand feet per second or 680 miles an hour. That means if we aim our cannon just a little bit up, we can travel an incredible distance. It is an incredible result. The mighty power of old Moses couldn't part the frozen water. It stayed intact and hit the target at a lethal 680 miles per hour. Sorry, my friend, I guess we underestimated the ice. And such an impressive result means the myth can proceed in its purest form without supplementary materials. The question is, how fast can pure H2O go? To find out, they're doubling the black powder dose. The gun is loaded. Judging by how everything's gone so far, I think the pure ice ball is going to survive just fine with a pound of black powder. In three, two, one. Well, a pound is a lot more aggressive. Wow. Yeah, that's more than double the sound. All right, let's check the high speed. Louder? Sure. Did it stay intact? Yep. But was there an increase in muzzle velocity? Yes, indeed. We were able to get our pure ice cannonball to travel over 1,400 miles per hour. That's Mach 1.7, but we're not done yet. Now we're gonna take Old Moses to the max. We're gonna go up to a pound and a half of black powder. <laughs> the powder burrito grande. Which is the most that this cannon can handle. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. <laughs> Old Moses supplies the biggest boom he can handle. And with the top speed topping out at an astonishing 1,550 miles per hour, the ice has exceeded all expectations. Sorry, my friend, I guess we underestimated the ice. The team has the balls. Now to build the barrel. They say size doesn't matter, but that's exactly what we're gonna test. Now what I have here is a giant cardboard tube. Everybody okay? Now this is how we're gonna make our ice cannons. This is the mold that we're gonna fill up with water and let it freeze so we can make our cannon. So I'm gonna build a couple of different sizes and we're gonna see which one is the strongest to withstand the exploding black powder. Yep, when it comes to cannons, size really does matter. The breech, that is the explosive chamber at the base of the barrel, has to contain and channel the energy of the black powder blast. So to find the optimal dimension, Tori is building three breeches with four, six, and eight inch walls and diameters of 12, 16, and 20 inches. Too thin and it'll explode. Too thick and the mass becomes structurally prohibitive to move around. All right, so now that the tubes are filled up with water, we just need to let them freeze, and then we'll have our breeches. And one week later, the ice-cold cannons are ready for a refrigerated trip to the bomb range. This is going to be fun. So we now know that half a pound of black powder is enough to propel our ice cannonball at 680 miles per hour, which should give us enough range and enough damage to be a viable weapon. Now what we need to do is work on the breach. God, it would suck if this thing fell. We have a four inch wall, a six inch wall, and an eight inch wall. We'll put our half pound of black powder in there and see which one of these, if any, is able to survive the kinds of forces that are generated in a cannon. First up is the 20 inch breach with eight inch walls. Don't let go. where surviving the half-pound black powder blast may not be the only issue. I gotta tell you, I can see some uh, problems with working with ice. Yeah, I don't know how these guys would have been able to actually maneuver an ice cannon. Mass is a big concern. The larger it is, the harder it'll be to build, move, and manipulate. Plus, even in the deepest midwinter... Loading the charge now. Due to the insulating properties of ice, Freezing large amounts of water takes a long time. All right, we're set. Let's go to the bunker. Meaning the smallest breach that can contain the blast will be the best option. So with the black powder loaded and no projectile, which barrel will survive? All right. 
Alright, this is 20 inch diameter breach in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> well, we just figured out a way to make hail yeah. instantly. Giant snow cone. Now that did not go according to plan. That's not gonna work. That is the thickest wall we have. So with a few more freshly frozen 20 inch breaches, the team decides a little less boom is required and not more ice. Now the reason that we're going with less gunpowder rather than thicker ice is twofold. See what tends to happen with ice is that the outer layer insulates the inner layer, so the core never really freezes solid. The second reason is that when you get to ridiculous sized ice, it becomes unwieldy, <laughs> therefore ineffective as a weapon. So we'll get out our 20 inch breeches, voila, lower the gunpowder, and see if we can get a speed that is potentially deadly. They're scaling down the black powder from eight to a mere 1.25 ounces. If the 20 inch breech can't handle this, all right, our cannon is hot. The myth is surely busted. In three, two, one. Oh. I think it did it. It worked. We shot the plug out without blowing up the breech. It was a somewhat less than big boom, but it's a start. Our breech hasn't exploded. It's still intact, which means it's reusable. We're gonna keep going. 1.75's next. All right, ice breech locked and loaded. Let's do this. In three, two, one. Whoa! Now that was more impressive, but can a brand new breach contain two ounces? Two ounces. In three, two, one. Oh. All right, looks like that was too much. I guess one and three quarter ounces, that's the perfect amount. Yeah, two's just a bit too much. So, we've got the ball. We've got the amount of black powder. We've got the size of the breach. You know what that means? That means it's time to build a full-size cannon and go for it. So with the key parameters in place. Right, 20 inch two. It's back to base for the big bill. Cut this down to five feet. A five foot ice cannon that can. That's big. <laughs> this is how we build our full-size, fully functioning ice cannon. First, we get our large cardboard tube and we seal them down to a base with a two-part polyurethane resin. This is totally as much fun as it looks. Then, we take a board the size of the cannonball, three and a quarter inches, and we inset that into our large cardboard tube. After that, we fill the whole thing with water. Like they say, just add water. We freeze it and hopefully we will get a perfect, beautiful ice cannon. While the cannons are in deep freeze, I'm gonna be building the carriage. Now this is gonna allow us to move our cannon around and aim it. Best part is, it's gonna have 18th century wheels. But the most important thing is that it gives us support. Now that's a long screw. This ice cannon needs to be fully supported because if it flexes at all, it's gonna crack and there goes our weapon. All right, I think that's it. Time to go get my cannon. Back at Big Boom HQ. Look out, people. We have an ice cannon. Ice cannon. Ice cannon. Ice cannon. Ice cannon. It's time to get down to business. Cannon goes here. We've come back to Angel's Camp to do the final experiment in our ice cannon myth. 100 feet. Now, so far, it's been very surprising. We learned that ice cannonballs actually stay intact and can go the distance. Right here, 150 yards. Let's set up our target. Now. We're gonna find out if an ice cannon it's time to deploy the army can shoot an ice cannonball. It's time to go to war. So this sets up the criteria for our myth. Number one, the ice cannon has to have sufficient range, meaning that it has to fire about 150 yards. Hey, when does the Shakespearean puppet show begin? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, it has to cause significant damage. This is a family show. This isn't quite from a family store. I might have to do a little bit of censoring. And number three, it has to be reusable. One time only doesn't work. That's better. If the ice cannon meets all three of these criteria, then we can call this myth plausible. What is that they're wheeling out? <laughs> uh, 
What they're wheeling out is a full-size cannon with a five-foot-long, 20-inch diameter barrel. It's a fantastic feat of frozen engineering. Whoa! Yes, it is! It's coming out! Good. But during the cannon's tricky transition from vertical in the truck... Whatever you do, don't break it. Shut up! ...to horizontal on the carriage... Okay, wait. Ooh. It's apparent how tough this test is going to be. One of the major challenges of the ice cannon is the fact that the one we made is 600 pounds. Ice is really, really heavy. We're lodged. It won't go up. It I won't. have to bring the whole thing up. A lot of drama here on the set of Mythbusters. So, so actually having to move it from the freezer onto a truck, off the truck, to here. Oh, stop. No, don't stop. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Get that tube off of the ice cannon and put it on the carriage without cracking or crushing it. Okay. It's insane. Ah! Now, let's get it on the carriage. I just want to see this thing work once. I hope we can. The extreme okay, so. mass coupled with the lack of structural integrity. What the hell are we doing? This is nuts! Is an obvious downfall of the building material. Woo! But once in position and prepped. Beautiful. Electric match here. It truly is a sight to behold. Oh, it's beautiful. It's an ice cannon. And whether it works or not. Look at that beauty. I uh, don't stand in front. The backs to the wall ingenuity is to be celebrated. All right, we're wired and hot. What this really is about is innovation, improvised weaponry, taking what you have to make something completely dangerous and totally cool. Or maybe a little dangerous. We'll see. It's been 300 years since this majestic MacGyver-like solution has supposedly worked. Will it take out the fearsome foam army? It's the moment of truth. All right, this is Ice Cannon final experiment. <laughs> In three, two, one. So far, so good. With a muzzle velocity of 200 miles an hour, the cannonball easily covered the 150 yards to the target zone. Look at this. This is the ice cannonball. This is awesome. We took our first shot and we reached two of the parameters. One, we made the distance and our cannon is still in good condition. We can take another shot. We just didn't get the damage that we were looking for, but for something that hasn't been done in 300 years, it's pretty good. Not just pretty good. The team successfully fired a cannon made of water. But according to their strict criteria, it's not yet successful. Well, I know the cannonball made it all the way to the guys, but I'm hoping this time it actually does some damage. So when you're talking about the damage that a cannonball can cause, you're talking about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy depends on two things, mass and velocity. Now, the mass is determined by the ball itself. So if we want more kinetic energy, what we need to do is increase the velocity. Now, under normal circumstances, all you need to do is add more black powder and it comes out faster. But the more black powder we put in, the greater risk of destroying the cannon itself before we get a lethal shot. So with the same amount of black powder and a tweak trajectory, we are hot. Will the ice cold cannon this time be an ice cold killer. This is the ice cannon in three, two, one. Whoa. The answer is no. Although the ball more than covered the distance, sailing over the heads of the targets, this myth is on the rocks. And for this myth to be plausible, we have to have damage and range and reusability all in one, and that just never happened. So, unfortunately, I think we have to bust this one. And I'm not happy about it. Oh, 